Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsans of Vool. And in this quick tip tutorial, we're gonna be having a look at how to use the rip vertices and rip edge functions. So to demonstrate this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make something that looks like a vent. So I'm just gonna bring in a cube, press S and Z to scale it on the Z axis, and then S and X to scale it on the X axis. So we've got a little bit of length through this. I'm gonna press Control and A to apply the scale. We always want to apply the scale and then I'm going to press tab and go into edge mode. If you don't have machine tools, just press tab and then press two. And then I'm gonna press control and R to get an edge loop in the center there. Click and then escape, so it's dead center. Control and B to bevel that out so it's relatively close to the edge. And then just so that we don't have these edges selected, I'm just gonna press Alt and then Shift and Alt to select those and then control and B again, just to add a little bit width. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this edge, except for I'm gonna add in, let's say six loops, click and then escape. So the vertex ripping and edge ripping is effectively the same thing. Either in vertex mode, you can select a vertex and then press V and it's gonna rip it up away from the edge or that vertex. I press control and Z to undo that or in edge mode, you can press V to do the same thing, okay? Now there is one thing that's important about this, so I just want to mention it. I keep pressing Ctrl and Z to undo that. If you press V and rip this up and then right click, it looks like it hasn't been done, but it has. If I now press G and move this edge, you will see it is disconnected. And a lot of people have problems where they start using this, think that that is now a solid object, but it isn't. These vertices here and here, there are vertices underneath each other and they're not connected. So if you're ever getting a non-manifold object and you've been doing something like vertex ripping, this is often why. So you can either go in and find exactly where that is, or if you just press A, M and merge by distance, that should fix that and now they're all the same. Now I'm just gonna go into edge mode and talk through this a little bit more because there is a little bit more subtlety to this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select and then shift select all of these edges and then we're gonna press V to rip them. Now, what's important is the side your mouse is on when you do the ripping. It is what controls the side that is going to be maintaining its connections. For example, if I put my mouse over on the right hand side and press V, you'll notice that this rips away from it. So it's ripped everything that's on the left hand side because my mouse is on the right. So the right hand side is say connected to the vertices. If I undo that and come over the other side, so I'm now on the left hand side and press V, you'll notice it is doing it from the opposite direction. I'm on the left hand side, so the left hand vertices are staying connected. And that's really important that you understand that. Otherwise, if I just undo that and you do it somewhere in the middle and press V, you'll notice you get some very weird different effects and we don't want that. So in this instance, this is a really cool way of making, let's say something like a vent. If I come over to the left-hand side, notice that I've left this one unselected so that it looks better and then press V. I can press then Z to constrain this on the Z axis, move that up and I've got something that looks like a vent. That's really cool. Now you will notice that there's gonna be some issues here Actually, this has done this quite well with the shading. You can see it's almost interpreting that there should be a line here, but this isn't going to work very well in terms of 3D printing. So we would want to select all of these vertices. So that one there, that one there, 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 and I might as well do there and there as well. And then with auto merge vertices on, that's that button there, I could press GG, move this to the side, and I've got something that looks much better. However, we can then go and do this to the other side, but this is still not gonna print. This isn't manifold, it's got holes in it. I mean, literally we've ripped holes into it. That's the whole function of the rip vertices or rip edge function, and that's not going to allow us to print it. And well, we can fill this all in, but that's a bit of a pain. So instead, if I just go back, if instead of pressing V, we press Alt and V, this is gonna do exactly the same thing, except for, I'm just gonna press Z to constrain it on the Z axis, you'll notice that it is automatically filled in the ripped holes with faces. So Alt and V is ripping, but maintaining a manifold object by inserting faces into the gap. Now we do have to be slightly careful with this. If we go into face mode, you can see this has created a triangle here. 
depending on what you're going to do, for example, if you're going to use sub D, this can cause some problems. I'm not going to use sub D, so this is no issue for me, but it is something to be aware of. And from then on, we can just do exactly the same thing. So vertex, 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 vertex. And then I'm just going to use control to select up to there and there. Finally there, auto mode vertices is on. GG, move that to the side. And if I go into object mode and you've got machine tools, I can alt and X, let's just turn that into symmetry mode and symmetrize that to the other side. And we've got a nice looking vent that will print pretty well. And if I do want to change anything, for example, bring those in so they're more equal, that'll make a really nice little addition to either a building or a vehicle. Now in the same vein as this, if I delete that and press Shift and A and bring in a plane, the other thing that I see people doing quite inefficiently, if I just press S and X and make that a little bit longer and then R and Y to rotate that around, is when making stairs, they go through this really, really faffy rigmarole of trying to make these stairs. Whereas if I just come here, put all those edge loops in, escape, and then we probably also need to select the bottom one and then press Alt and V with my mouse on the left hand side and then Z to constrain to the Z axis and we've got our stairs. So really quick, easy way of making stairs. And I've seen people do this in some very, very long winded ways that look just quite frankly painful. So hopefully that's a function you're going to find some use for, especially with the fill option. So Alt V, this is a function that I just keep finding uses for. And as always, please do give this video a like if you found it helpful and put any comments in the comment section if you've got any questions or any other videos that you'd like to see.